This is Mike Goldberg, the voice of Bellator MMA. Great to be podside once again. Set to enter the podcast right now. Our tale of the tape, the current undefeated champion of the world, Captain Hooter, defending his title once again. And I can tell you, no champion has ever defended his podcast this many times. Well, since podcast began. Can he do it again? Let's find out. Here we go! It's Captain Hooter. (laughs) Hello? What's happening, everyone? Hooter here. Coming to you very high, feeling very alive in this mysterious land. And I am here today to talk to you about Amsterdam. And we have this fantastic map here of one of my favorite cities in the entire world. And today, we are talking with Mark, the head guy over at the Jack Hare Cup, which I'm going to be one of the judges for coming up in September. And on September 10th and September 11th, there's going to be two incredible back-to-back day events happening right there in Zandvoort at the Tam Tam Club. And it is going to be off the hook. But first of all, I want you to meet Mark, and we're going to talk all about the Jack Hare Cup. Check this out. One. Hola, hola, everyone. Captain Hooter here, once again, very high and about to be very, very alive because we have a very special guest here today. I've been telling you guys for the last month or so that I'm getting ready to head to Amsterdam for a very big event. And today we've got the organizer, the king, the master, the emperor, Jack Hare Cup, EU. Mark. Mark, how are you, sir? Hey, Captain. Good afternoon. Good to see you. All good. All good. Uh, We're uh, busy with the preps of uh, this year. Uh, As you know, might know, it's a little little bit warm in uh, Europe at the moment. But uh, hey, after a few uh, days, you get used to it. And uh, no, everything is good. I just turned uh, into a father four months ago. So uh, yeah. Yeah, I want to do a little shout out to my little baby boy. His oh. name is Jack. And uh, yeah, it's it's wonderful, man. So I'm doing good. Outstanding. Dude, uh, you know, I, I've talked about this. Uh, this is going to be my third year participating in one way or another. And uh, the, the first year I ended up giving away an award while I was in Jamaica. And last year, I really got a chance to participate properly and see the entire process from beginning to end. And I have to tell you, again, loved every step of that from the beginning to the end, the way you've handled it, the way you've managed it, the way you've put it all together, the quality of the entries and just the whole vibe and the way that it was all put together was outstanding. And I have to tell you, I am so excited. I can't wait to get there this year. (laughs) Thanks, man. Yeah, good stuff. I I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, I, I'm going to put a couple of pictures so that people can see a couple of the shots from uh, what I did from uh, that I did from the event last year. Uh, one of the things that it to me is incredibly awesome is the way that you set up uh, the award system. Um, how the the public's uh, vote is worth this. Can you explain that part of it and how yeah, that works? Sure, yeah. Well, basically, the thing is that it's all about the people. Uh, that's bottom line. I mean, we want to have uh, good quality products out in the market. And that's why we organized this cup to, you know, show what the quality products out there are. And that's why yeah, you've been uh, a blind judge, as I call it, yourself. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, you only get jars with numbers on it. You don't know what's inside. Uh, you're judging it, and that's from an experience, uh, ex- uh, expert's point of view. Mm-hmm. But then you also want to know, okay, but what's for the consumers? Because those are the people that go out into the shops and buy these products. Do they agree, or, or how does that work? And then you see that there's always a, a variety of, of, of voters. Obviously, you have shops that have you know more traffic than other shops, and therefore they get or have the chance to get more votes. Um, for that reason, we only count the online votes for 30%, and the rest we do for 70%. Um, because, yeah, honestly, the opinion of you guys as uh, expert uh, industry judges, yeah, that's the most value uh, opinion we can get. And, yeah, we always like to work with, uh, you know, uh, good uh, the measuring devices. Um, so this year we're, we're uh, hooking up with the Purple Pro. Um, they're going to do the measuring uh, for all the entries. And so, yeah, we'll have uh, even better uh, uh, sight known and sight what's, what's inside the product. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. You know, the, the, the variety of your judges are spectacular. And I know you've you've went to some special effort to make sure everybody is an expert in a different field or in a supporting field. Uh, last year, um, and I, I don't think he's I don't know if he's involved this year or not, but uh, I had Herbert Green was there, Herb Green, and he was you know he's a fellow interpreter. It was the first time that I ever had an opportunity to work with another interpreter uh, from the Tricom Institute, and it was. It was like finding a brother from a different mother. You know, we spoke we spoke the exact same language. We were looking and and smelling and tasting the exact same things. And and his level, his his expertise was uh, is, is is primarily with his incredibly sensitive nose and his taste. Whereas mine, of course, is all micro and all about uh, looking under microscope and identifying you know the 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 qualities of the cannabis under a loop and. Yeah. Um, uh, between the two of us, and then adding all the other experts that you had in there and all the different styles. And uh, I learned a shitload of stuff last year from from Jonathan Hirsch and Johnny yeah. Dabbs. Um, those two guys taught me more about concentrates last year uh, than ever. What, what do, can you tell me, is, are we <laughs> the same categories this year with the concentrates and with everything else? Uh, with the concentrates, we do have the same categories. Um, we did have made a little switch in the other categories. Uh, for example, the pre-roll category we took out of it. Uh, reason why is because we have quite some uh, shops in Holland. It's common that a pre-roll is with tobacco. Mm-hmm. And when you're working with international judges from America, Canada, or wherever they come from, they are used to smoke a pure joint. Yeah. So for them, it's really tough to, 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 to judge it, especially if you don't like tobacco. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so therefore, I decided, okay, we're going to skip that one. But we do create a special product, which can be like a really cool pre-roll, like a blunt, uh, like moon rocks or something like that, like a mm. special item, um, which, yeah, you know, you find more and more on the shelves nowadays. Yes. Luckily, um, yes. because, yeah, the, the market is changing, man. It's, it's, it's fun to see. Oh. But also with the judges, it's, it's for, uh, for me, it's important what you say that um, you have 12 categories. And let's say that the judges, they, uh, because the best coffee shop is more the, the public. Um, so when you have 11 categories to, ju- to be judged, and you cannot do all those entries by yourself in a week on your own, you know, that's, that's insane. You, we, and we want to have like proper judging. So you need to take a few hours time for each entry. Yeah. So yeah. if you're a sativa expert, then we focus you on the sativas. If you're an indica expert, we focus you on indicas, ash, uh, 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 extracts, uh, uh, etc. That's how we want to uh, do it. Yep. And yeah. yeah, this year we even have an extra judge. We have seven judges instead of six. Great. Um, because yeah, the amount of entries, yeah, you saw it last year, but it's overwhelming. And we want to keep up the, the good quality judging. And it was, it, it, it did get crazy. It, it started off fine. And, you know, we, <laughs> and, and for me, it's, it's slightly different because again, I'm, I'm photographing each one of these. So each sample for me, I'm taking between, you know, if it's a shitty sample, I'll take 
50 photos. If it's a great one, I might take 500 or 600 photographs of that one bud, of that one sample, right? So, you know, I'm taking, I figured, I, I was looking at the number, I think I took somewhere close to 10,000 photographs during the period of time that I was there through all of the different samples and then taking them. And thousand. I mean, we, we, you how many, asleep, how put many, your finger on the button. <laughs> I mean, you had new samples coming in every day. That was a lot. You had a lot of people well, entering at the yeah, last minute know, last year. Basically that's every year. Mm. I mean, there's, there's, there's several things going on. There are several cups or several competitions being held uh, nowadays and uh, coffee shops are busy. Um, yeah, you know that the back, uh, Round of the coffee shops is uh, uh, not as easy as most people think. Right. It's not like a supermarket where people where, where products just come in and go out. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's uh, uh, it's tough. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was it like I said, it was surprising. It's, you know, I would I would go to bed on on Wednesday night and I go, okay, well, I think I've got all of the narrow leaves. I got all the sativas done, and then come in the next day, there was five more sativas and seven more indicas, and it was like, oh shit, okay, well. Let's get to work. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I know there was uh, the last day um, because everything needs to be packed properly. And uh, that was because I had to went back uh, from the judge house to my place to get the, the final things that were packed back to the house. Mm -hmm. And but it's it's yeah, I, I this year I gave myself an extra week. Um, but last year, it was also that we had uh, the COVID restrictions going on. Uh, yep. We didn't know for sure if we were continuing or not. People are doubting, is it going to go on? Uh, eventually, uh, we, used, we had to switch from the Hard Rock Cafe to Tam Tam because yep. everything was planned at the Hard Rock. And then the Hard Rock, yeah, they came up with regulations where as a corporate company, I understand, they, yeah, they couldn't go uh, around. So we could either have, have an event with them for a hundred people, or we could go to Tam Tam, to the beach club and scale it up to 400, what we want to, what you a, know. What a great call that was. Dude. Yeah, thanks man. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> six weeks time. We had to change everything, but we made it happen. And especially also thanks to you guys. I mean, uh, everybody who helped us out, big shout out. The mm. crew of Tam Tam and the, the Tam Tam family. Yeah, they're amazing, man. The food was Dude. delicious. Kept the whole, running out. No, I was walking the, around. I was like, "Well, there's food everywhere. And everybody was enjoying." And but that's the whole idea about this cup. Is it's it's not only about the cup and about winning an award. It's putting the right people at the right place together. I mean, all these business owners, these shop owners, they are busy day on a daily basis. They don't have time to talk with everybody, but they do want to network. And mm -hmm. if you have a shop in the south of Holland and, hey, you can uh, meet somebody from the north and he has a special strain or whatever, and you can exchange some, you know, some ideas, let's call it like that. Yeah. that that's, that's beautiful. That's networking. And then you bring also the breeders who make beautiful products out in the world. Mm -hmm. That's what for me it's it's what I love to do, man. You see so many breeders with so many beautiful products, and they put do their uh, best and take all the risks to give the consumers, the people, a good product on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And that's what I I often you know I sit at the coffee shop sometimes. You have to wait for the for the owner or somebody for a few minutes, and you look at the people that come in, and sometimes they come in grumpy and uh, ten euros weed, and and then I'm like. I don't understand, you know, these people, they don't think about what these shop owners need to risk and need to do to get them that 10 euros. Yeah. 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 But hey, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's getting there. I mean, you and I and other people, we try to, uh, you know, educate people and try to normalize uh, this whole industry. Yeah. Because yeah, it's for me, it's not a normal daily thing, man. Well, you know, I, you know I, I haven't been there for the last couple of months. I've been here exploring in Portugal and in Spain. When I first came back and, and bounced into Spain, I found some cultivars that were just spectacular. Uh, and I know that I think you have some people that are entering this year from Spain. Uh, you have an international um, section to the cup. Um, yeah. Can you talk about that and, and the categories and everything there? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, also the reason why we went with the international uh, category, we did it last year as well, is that you cannot compare uh, cauliflowers 
with uh, European flour. So let's call it like that. That's a different standard. And that's why we have import flour, for example. Um, we have extracts. A lot of coffee shops, they don't have extracts out yet. First of all, they don't know that rosin, which is just pressed cannabis, it's legal to sell. But when you, uh, uh, you know, when it's, uh, uh, when you use a, a substance like the CO2 or the or BHO or whatever, then it becomes uh, uh, the illegal uh, right. uh, thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, to me, it's, it's just like some uh, shops, they set put it out as hash mm -hmm. when they get a check and the others, they just don't dare to do it. Right. So when it's, when it's a, a slim uh, category where you only have a few entries in, yeah, it's almost harsh to, to, to maintain a category like that. But on the other hand, I do want to, and we do want to give a platform to the people because to me, it's the, it's the future. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. when I look at an America or other markets, when you see the market share of extracts, how big that is, Huge. Uh, over here, some shop owners, I explained them, I said, hey, the shelves, the products you have on your shelves now, that's just a small portion of what you eventually will have. Mm -hmm. Because the uh, edibles, uh, the extracts, topicals, all those type of things which are coming, hey, that's uh, the biggest, that's maybe the bigger, biggest market. You know, and that's part of it is, is you know, again, I was just talking with Ben about this, you know, and, and Jair, the same thing. You know, to me, there's always the reason for anything is follow the money, you know, yeah. follow the money. Why isn't this happening? Well, somebody's making a bunch of money to make sure that's not happening. And yeah. they're making more money than, than, and they've paid off whoever it is. You know, that's usually the, the cynical <laughs> kind of way mm -hmm. that I, I, I look at these types of things. It is interesting. You know, we did an interview uh, uh, two years ago, Family First. And, oh, you know, yeah. yes. And he, Respect you know, he has, he has a very interesting kind of a pre existing scenario there that allowed him even two years ago to be able to start doing concentrates which is you know phenomenal to be able to have that but right around the corner just 50 yards around the corner you know it, that was the last thing they would ever think about doing would be putting together concentrates um yeah. you know so confusing uh from that environment speaking of confusing you have a very confusing mayor that's confusing the rest of the world about what the fuck's going on. <laughs> Can people come to the coffee shops? Are they allowed to? Uh, are all the red the red light district is getting uh, moved? What's happening? Yeah, it's uh, you know I'm, I'm, I don't want to go into politics that much. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> but to give you a, a, a my opinion about it is that the mayor is doing uh, what she's being paid for to do. Yeah. So okay. like with most people that work for a boss, if you don't do what your boss says you, what you need to do, then you get fired and they put in another mayor. Yeah. Reason why I believe that she is not against coffee shops is because her husband, uh, Omo or something, Otto or something like that, he made the, the, the series Cannabis where Ben Dronkers uh, was in and where uh, a few other of the legends were in. He oh. made that do the documentary. That's so, what made everybody think she was going to be pro cannabis when she came in. Then I didn't know maybe, that part. Maybe, uh, honestly, I don't know her, and I never speak to her, and I don't know the husband either. But mm -hmm. it's it's funny when you just think about the fact that the, the mayor, who is you know pronouncing uh, against cannabis, that her husband, where she lays in bed with her at night, <laughs> wow, <laughs> made a documentary about the, the beautiful history of the Dutch cannabis, you know. Yeah, that doesn't uh, that doesn't add up to me. God, but then I again, know. it's it's funny you just mentioned the, the follow the money part. Uh, that's what I also say to the shop owners here in Holland. Some shop owners they have the vision and they see, hey, we're getting to some next level. Other shop owners they are afraid that they're just being one of another shop, which just you know sell all the same products. And I'm just like guys, when you look at what what's happening in the U.S. and what's happening in Canada especially Canada, mm -hmm. look at the, at the top companies that are there, uh, like uh, Canopy, like Aurora. Um, these, the top shareholders, the top 10 shareholders of these companies, the three of them are the same shareholders that own Coca-Cola, Apple, yeah. Visa, basically all the companies in the world. 
Yeah. So if, if these type of investment companies invest into cannabis, mm -hmm. this means that they already know that it's going to roll out over the world. Right. And that's what you see with Thailand now, for example. Yeah. Man, overnight, like, uh, for example, Johan Valarov, uh, he went there uh, down in, in, in bad time, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, like a year later that they release him, all of a sudden they, they can buy flour on everywhere for free. <laughs> And then you're like, what? So you put down this man because he's yeah. been selling uh, cannabis in Holland? This, these are the type of things where, you know, the, the world is, is a crazy yeah. world, man. Yeah, there's too many, there's too many uh, uh, conflicts of, 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 of sanity. Uh, there's men, you know, in prison for 40 years right now and uh, uh, for, for doing the same thing that the, the girl NBA player was doing. Uh, going well, to Russia, so, yeah, and so you know, there's level of standards and everything are are crazy. You know, the uh, I'm excited uh, still, and more so right now about Amsterdam because mm -hmm. I think that you know, based on I think people are learning again, and because there wasn't as many tourists. Uh, and and business become became a little bit tighter. I think that that's really a good thing. I think it's something that Amsterdam needed. And from what I'm hearing from people, the quality of the cultivars that have been coming out in the last five or six months have been a lot better. Oh, and, yeah. So uh, you know, I'm I just, really look for the end to the entries of this year. I, I mean, yeah. I don't know them yet because I only know them when they give it to me. Oh, yeah. But hey, it's uh, when I look at the menus, and uh, uh, yeah, well, Family First is a, is a nice example. I'm surprised by the variety of his menu, mm -hmm. but also these are the type of ent entrepreneurs that see the bigger picture. They see the future, and they know, hey, I gotta go out there and make deals with these brands. Yeah. Because in Holland, when you go into a coffee shop, you buy flour. You buy white widow you buy haze you buy uh, gelato or whatever but you never buy white widow from captain hooter you know right. or something like that yeah and that's what you have going on in the u.s and in canada it's like brands that are coming in mm -hmm. and if you're a smart entrepreneur then you hook up with the popular brands and make sure that you have them in your shop right in so yeah that's that's exactly what i just got through talking to chris wren and, and I think you were in there in Planet 13 in, in Las Vegas. Yeah. For us, the first time I was there, literally, and, and then we, took, we looked around, but we weren't there, you know, really long for our feeling. It was like an hour and a half. Yeah. yeah. We were already 30 minutes before we went to the actual part where they sell the flower. Mm. You're so amazed about everything when you come in, the entrance and the, the mm. floors, the walls, it's all digitally done and interactive and... It's Amazing. Amsterdam on steroids. And that's what it's about to turn into because now they're going to have yeah. cannabis lounges. And if you watch oh, yeah. the if you watch that episode and, and listen to, to Larry and Chris and talking about all the shit that they're going to have with the dab bars and the and the huge lounges with game rooms, the restaurant where you can infuse yourself. Yeah. Like you get a taco and you can get guacamole regular <laughs> or you can get 10% guacamole or 20% two 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 ten percent guacamole. Waco a taco. You can whack yeah. yourself out as hard as you want to whack yourself out. You're God. I'm that I, I told him, I said, the only thing you're gonna need to do in your gift shop is sell sleeping bags because I'm never gonna leave that place once I'm in there. I can you got everything here I need. I'm good. Little stage, a little nightclub over here, let some musician play at night and I'm done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> shower, shower in the back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so this year the judges, uh, the judges are going to be judging for how many days? Five days. They got five days yeah. of, of judging time. Five days of judging. Right, and um, we have. Uh, 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 can you tell me some I, of the I, other I, judges? Or is, is no, that no, no, you no, can't tell me any of the judges yet. Oh, okay. That's well, you know that we keep it always keep a secret who the judges are. Okay. Um, reason why, I mean, I, yeah, you're a, you've been a judge last year. You would not want to be bothered with DMs on Instagram or whatever. Like, hey, Captain, can you vote for us? We're entering with this and yeah. this and this and this. Yeah. You don't want that because yeah. you're already busy on that five days concerning mm -hmm. how the fuck am I going to judge all these flowers, you know, yeah. or or hash well, or whatever. 
and they already so, know me and already know that I wrote the book and that I don't play that shit. So, <laughs> and I don't care. I could care less no. who wins. I'm all I care about is what I see under that microscope. That's the go. That's the exactly. And that's why uh, uh, we always do like uh, with the minute we start judging, that's when uh, the judges can post something and stuff like that because then they know they I know they're in the house and mm -hmm. it's different. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it's it's the it's the vibe and it's interacting with each other and it's you know it's so much uh, 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 when you add up all the years of experience yeah. that's around in that house. And that's, uh, it was for crazy. me, it's like, it's like being a holiday, but then it's work, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, 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 it, it is. And it, but again, it's, it's, it's a brain trust, you know? And yeah. all, if you take all those years of experience and, and throw them all into one big bowl, holy shit. And, yeah. and the specificity of what everybody does also makes a big difference. Um, 100%. You know, uh, uh, the other part that is special about this year is that uh, you've you've tagged tag teamed with uh, Uncle Stoner, and yeah. on the the day after your awards, a day after you have a squash off. This is a whole nother ball game now, um, and this yeah. adds a whole nother flavor. Can you talk a little yeah. bit about? Yeah, of course. No, yeah. well, basically, uh, normally, as you know, the cup is a business to business day, so we have people that are from the industry, like I explained. But I also get, or we also get emails uh, into the mailbox where it's like, hey, uh, can we come to this event? We would love, we're cannabis uh, connoisseurs and we would love to come over. And then I reply to them, are you a business related or a consumer? And then they ask, so they're like, oh, we're consumer, but we love to come in. And I'm like, yeah, but it's only for invited guests from the industry, it's business to business. So after the uh, three years of doing this, we were like, hey, why don't we just try to see if we can create a second day where it's for the consumers. Um, but it's also tough because we cannot sell any flour. You cannot hand out any flowers. I mean, it's, it's basically the winners. They yeah. can show their product over there. That's what they can do, mm -hmm. uh, but that's it. Um, and then what, what else are we gonna do? We can put out some booths so people have some entertainment. But hey, what, what are we, uh, why don't we connect with Bobby, with Uncle Stoner, and see if we can, you know, combine a squash off uh, with uh, Consumers Day. Perfect. And yeah, I love uh, Bobby and Daddy. They're great people. I mean, there are, yeah, when, once they're in your heart, they will never go out of there, I think. Um, the they best. have a great concept. They've been working their asses off. Um, and I just like to support them, you know. Also with this, uh, uh, commercial wise we don't make money with this day for yeah. us it's just uh, uh, we added it it fits into the budget that we break even on that it's all about people community and also supporting because education like i said in the beginning for me is an important reason why i'm in this industry mm -hmm. um, when people go out in the, on the streets over here and you ask somebody a dutch guy over here hey do you know what rosin is mm -hmm. yeah so, uh, what rose? The Dutch word for roses. They don't understand what it, what, it, what what you're talking about. So if we can have 420 people on that spot, examining live on screens what's happening on that stage, live pressing. Yeah, yeah that's a beautiful educational uh, part. Mm. Plus, this product is legal to sell here uh, on the shelves. Yes. So also for entrepreneurs who want to make a move into rosin, it might be a thing like, hey. I'm a breeder, I have nice products, maybe I should make a rosin brand or something like that. Like uh, a Johnny Depp, for example, that's, yep. uh, hey, take my hat off for that. This yep. guy is just uh, brilliant, smart. Love him. Le learned a shitload of stuff from him last year. He is, he's a wonderful yeah. teacher as well. That was, uh, that, was, that, was, that was wonderful. You know, the, oh, the, yeah. thing about, the thing about the adding the squash off, which is so fascinating also is, out, again, out of all the types of competitions and stuff that I've seen, he has probably the most legit competition that there can be because all the judges are sitting in a V facing the audience. And as, yeah. as they're doing the dabs, it's like you're, that's your judging on the spot and shit. And it's yeah. like, oof, uh, I'm, I, I have to be honest with you. I'm a little, I'm a little scared in. 
I'm a little scared. And I, I was watching some of the legends. I watched uh, some videos of these guys, you know, Soma and. You're a judge this year with squash I'm up, right? I'm, I'm doing yeah, yeah. the squash up. Now, the only yeah. thing that I'm happy about with that is the fact that my tolerance level will be built up. By the time I get there from from ahead of time, otherwise I would be petrified going into there because it only takes if I haven't had a dab in a long time or, or any really killer killer buds, one dab could take me out for a day. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can be. I had. I still talk about the dab that I had when I was in Spanibus. Uh, that I was at my booth and I don't even remember what happened for about an hour. I, oh, I, really? I was signing books and talking to people. And then somebody said, hey, hey. And I went, whoa. <laughs> it, <laughs> I was gone. It was fucking, that was a, still, I think about that. Maybe the most, hmm. it was, a, you know, that was the first time that I had somebody really professionally do a dab for me. It was always yeah. kind of Mickey Mouse before that. And this guy yeah. had, you know, professional case that opened up and had his rigs and his fucking <laughs> temperature <laughs> digital stuff and a timer that ding, ding. It, you yeah. know, it's like holy shit this is next level <laughs> this is next well, level. I, had the, I had the same with craggy from the uh, weed feed coffee shop league yes yes uh, yes, yes. Uh, he's he, a master. He, well the, the first time i was in the u.s and i dab they were just you know fucking with me they fucked yeah. me up because <laughs> i i took a dab like i took like a, like a hit from a bong yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's yeah. not the, the advice. That's not the way to take your first hit from a, from a rig. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah. He was really like, Mark, you know, I'm going to give you a baby dab. And I was like, a baby dab? And other people were laughing. Yeah. You know, the dab that the girls take. I'm like, motherfucker. But mm -hmm. give it to me. Give it to me. So I took it. It was a really small one. Hey. And then I, I had the feeling I was lifted up and I was like floating. <laughs> and after like 30 minutes this feeling was gone i went to craig i said hey give me, give me another give me another one yeah hey, he, he, he basically learned me the micro dosing thing yeah and that's beautiful man i mean yeah, with, yeah, with, yeah. with smoking i can't micro dose that's dude i totally think that's the whole right. future of everything here all yeah. of it you know the uh, we talked about last year when we did uh, we did some live interviews on the awards day uh, when um, Mira won the Lifetime Achievement, Lifetime Award. Achievement Award, yeah. which was phenomenal. Uh, still the sweetest, kindest lady. And Close had, call and hang, by the way. Yeah, well, I got to I got to oh. hang with her here at uh, Canada Portugal, and oh, uh, she hey. was in the booth right next to me. So nice. I, we, we were together for a, a whole weekend and, you know, I, I got a chance to sit and watch, you know, how many people just adore her and love her and, yeah. and how kind she is with everyone. And it's just, mm, she's like a big, she's just like a teddy bear, my hash teddy bear. <laughs> Remember uh, last year when you had the, the interview with the, in the podcast that we did? Yes. With the cop last year? Yes. Um, or it was, no, it was two years ago. Um, I was I was editing the movie, editing the the interview, right, with, with all the cameras and stuff, mm -hmm. and I was just in so intrigued by her story that what she told about uh, going from uh, from the Netherlands all the way to Nepal. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh! I need to switch cameras. <laughs> I just forgot to 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 do my thing at that point. Yeah. Because I was so into her drag yes. into her story oh and that's what i what i love man when you when you listen to these people and hey nothing but respect mila is also for me like yeah man. that's why i honestly was happy that she won last year mm -hmm. because i know that she's not like the most commercial uh, uh, uh type of woman she's really you know like uh, um yeah how do, how do you say it more she's just like, yeah she's legend status you know she's on another yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so do to you know, compete to a brand as the Bulldog, okay, that's not a that's a tough thing to do. Who is? Uh, do you know who's uh, who's winning this year? Are you announcing that yet, or? Uh, shall I give you a scoop? Well, I'll take the scoop. I'll take it. <laughs> um, so basically, since uh, last year I was so close with Hank de Vries from the Bulldog. We are going to uh, give the award this year to Hank de Vries. Um, we, the crew, we made a unanimous decision because yeah. we were talking about who are we going to uh, nominate this year. And then everybody was like, hey, Mark, why don't we just give it to Hank? Yeah. It was so close last year. And I mean, for me, Hank is a, is a yeah, he's the, the legend well, of the industry. Simple. 
another one of the faces on the Mount Rushmore of weed, right there. Hey, when you look, when you, uh, I, I have his book. Um, I listened to the podcast what, what he was uh, uh, where he was interviewed and mm -hmm. on a different angle than he's normally doing. So he really personally opened up more. Mm -hmm. Hey, when you when you hear that story, I mean, there's a lot where where I look at myself and I mean. My mom and dad, they're workers, you know, they're not entrepreneurs. So okay. I didn't, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mind to call That's it. Right. Yeah. So you yeah. have to do everything on your own. And when I look at Hank and, and the way how he built up his empire, because that's what it is, mm -hmm. uh, hey, chapeau, that's uh, all I can say. Yeah. And that's you what know, needs to be honored. It is, it is one of the, the, the consistent characteristics of all of these guys. All these legends that I've been interviewing, you hear it from, from, you know, from Mila to, to, uh, uh, to Ben, all of them. Yeah. You know, they're, everybody has got this commitment and loyalty, uh, usually to the plant and to uh, the knowing they're doing the right thing and from yeah. the beginning and they never turn back. And it's that consistency uh, that, has, that has allowed them to become, you know, again, the legends so that they're winning Lifetime Achievement Awards. You know, that's, well, but that's, that's pretty. You can't win the, uh, this award when you just started into this industry. Yeah, you can't uh, be just playing around. No, I love it, it. it has to be at the right place and, uh, yeah, like I say, we all respect the uh, Hank a lot. And uh, I, yeah, I was going to ask you because I saw I, I've been you know I follow your Instagram feed and um, I you have you put up some of the uh, sponsors. You've got some some big sponsors this year. Again, for I saw something I hadn't seen before, um, ah. uh, and it looked like a new coffee shop. Is it, is it called the Cat? Yeah, and is it just because uh, is it new or is it because it's not in Amsterdam? No, it's in Breda. It's in uh, North Brabant, the city in the, the southern part of uh, the Netherlands, close to the Belgian border. Okay. Um, so it's as far as away from uh, Antwerp than Amsterdam. <laughs> to give you an example. Damn. Okay. But yeah, they uh, uh, just renewed their uh, they're renewing their shop, and they are under construction phase. Mm -hmm. But they have like nine screens on the inside. So when you walk in, there's like three screens over there where you actually see the buds spinning around, mm -hmm. all branded. You have the bud bar displays underneath there with the jars in there. So it's like a small uh, uh, American dispensary experience mm -hmm. when you walk in there. And yeah, these guys, they're young, uh, young entrepreneurs. They, uh, yeah, they have a clear vision about where they want to go. And hey, they get the whole picture oh, and they cool. are ready for the future. That's uh, definitely, I can tell. Uh, well, and they're presenting, like... sponsor, uh, presenting sponsor with us this year. So big shout out to the cap. Uh, we, we were just, we were on another track here and I didn't get a chance to talk to you. We were, we were still talking about concentrates. And yeah. it, the, one of the things that I was talking about with Ben um, is we were talking about CBD yeah. And uh, the, you know, he was saying essentially, uh, you, you know, you have the, he has a CBD company and then you have the cannabis company, right? Yeah. And uh, still in the Netherlands, CBD and THC are not connected together. You can't buy or get legally properly a, those, no. A properly and and there was a story that came out, I think it was two weeks ago, and it talked about uh, people over the age of 50 mm -hmm. and the products that they use, uh, cannabis products. One of the number one products was the tinctures with three to one, three to one or two to one uh, dilution rates of THC and CBD. Okay. And and everyone, you know, the, the, what everyone is saying essentially is that in order for CBD to really work, you need THC. It's got to be yeah. linked together with. <clears throat> but, but honestly, also the other way around. Yeah. 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 It, it, to, get the, to get the full spectrum, right? To get yeah, the full. That, that's why some people that are hash smokers, a hash has a higher amount of CBD mm -hmm. than a normal flowers over here. So they uh, have a better balance, basically. 
-hmm. That's why that feeling is a different feeling than, yeah, like the, the ones that like, uh, like the, the flower smokers like, like I am. Sure. Do you think there's any chance that, that that easy one might get resolved in the Netherlands where you can at least start putting those two together? Um, well, or honestly, I mean, we uh, in, the coffee shops, in the coffee shops that where you can still smoke, mm -hmm. it's no longer allowed to smoke with tobacco. So you can only smoke pure flour. Okay. If I was a shop owner and I had a, sh a smoking lounge in my shop, I would sell CBD flour. And I would sell it for a reasonable price because the prices of CBD flour nowadays, what I hear is they went yeah, pretty, uh, pretty down in that, uh, uh, in that point. So cheap. if you can, yeah, cheaper. So if you can provide your clients with a, a cheap solution to mix their cannabis with the CBD and then still smoke inside, they yeah. eventually will end up also smoking more. Mm -hmm. You'll be hang, um, hanging there longer, and, and mm -hmm. it's you know by law of, uh, of the Dutch uh, government. That's a great idea, because that fake tobacco shit that they offer people is horrific. That might be worse than the tobacco. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I I don't know. I tried a few. You got that? You got a, you got a new one now, Ken, uh, from Bas. He's a nice uh, nice guy, and actually he does a pretty good job with his product. Yeah, but for me, it's uh, when I smoke it. Uh, you have also gringo, you know. It's it's you have different type of uh, tobacco substitutes, mm -hmm. which are just not you know not the thing. Yeah. For me, when I smoke my flower, I don't like the smoke of my flower anymore. Yeah. So yes, I get high, but for me, it's not just getting high. I like the when I hit this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. Cheers. The taste, the whole experience, everything. Yeah, cheers, man. It's it's definitely a different kind of a, a combination. And you know, I smoked cigarettes and and you know, I loved them. It was the hardest thing that I ever quit doing ever was smoking cigarettes. But they were cigarette cigarettes, you know, Marlboros. And I, the tobacco that that a lot of Europeans use to mix with their hashish and with their cannabis isn't like that tobacco. It's a very different more almost like you went to the, the, the farm and when you were at the farm right after they came out of the, the machine while it was still clean without chemicals on it. Oh, you're smoking from a mushroom. <laughs> I I'm a it fun was guy. A, yeah, I thought it was a penis first. <laughs> oh, dude, dude. That's harsh. I was like, what's he holding? That's harsh. Oh, okay. I understand. Like, oh, okay, I understand. Maybe if you're looking at it from the side, uh, like, oh, okay, yeah, I got you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that goes away from any more smoke <laughs> from camera. Dude, uh, I'm excited. Can't wait to get back. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I, I, I feel like, again, I've been in rehab or something because you know, unless you make the runs to go to Spain, uh, I've, I've, I've been smoking Portuguese, uh, weed. How is the weed uh, over there? Uh, so, uh, I've, I've had the about three or four, it's mostly, it's mid, it's all mid. There's, okay. there's some, there's some nice buds, but I mean, it's, it's such, no a eight, nine, culture, uh, such a different culture, such a different culture. And it's, uh, you know, the, the, everybody, still handles everything almost like it reminds me of when i lived in southern california and i used to buy mexican weed and you always got the rolled up bag and then you know somebody scribbled something on it and it's but but you know what it's it's got me by i'm fine they, they, they uh, yeah. don't have dreams gold over there right <laughs> no they don't have any dreams gold over here i just pulled up the photos and i'll put those up here on the on the show right now of my, of the winning uh ones and you know what's yeah. interesting i picked all of those i picked all of those and the, the the actual photos tell the truth you know I, that's why i was telling you remember when we were in jamaica and all the rastas were coming up and 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 it's i got the microscope truth. and I go this is the truth man yeah. 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 captain tell me the truth <laughs> yeah. the, the microscope tells the truth uh, I'm thrilled. Thank you, my friend. Uh, yeah, September 10th. Uh, everybody, uh, you can start voting from the first of September. Uh, yes, uh, oh, the third of September. The okay. third, not the first. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, till the ninth, uh, and then on the tenth, we're gonna announce the awards, which will be also uh, broadcasted live this year again by Weed Advisor. Um, so yeah, 
I will look forward to it. And then the second day is the consumer day with the squad cup. So it's going to be an uh, amazing weekend. I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't wait. <laughs> Me neither, man. I can't wait to see you in person. Can't wait. It's been a while. Yeah. Thanks a I lot. You, Thank you've you been so. doing uh, great. I've been watching a few of your episodes, and I love the way uh, you've been doing it. Also, Thank the you. one with Dan Herrera, which you did, was a yes. really good one. Uh, really nice, which you also had met in Jamaica when we were there. Yes. So, so no, I'd love to uh, to see things, good things going around, man. That's another thing I'm excited about, though, is uh, is is what you're going to do in the future. But I'm going to wait because I'm going to do a couple of live shows while I'm uh, while I'm there, and uh, so we're going to have some live interviews and and uh, uh, show as much as uh, you can get away with, and uh, we'll talk about the future and uh, and. I'll give you one tip. One tip for the future for 2023. Okay. Uh, habla español. Donde esta foto? Oh, muy bien, muy bien. Oh, sí, sí. Perfect. Thank you, my friend. Muchas gracias, amigo. Thank you. Oh, hey, welcome back. How about that? Dude, I cannot wait to get back. This is going to be a absolutely off the hook Jack Herricup. And the squash off on top of it, holy shit, dude. I. I'm seriously, I'm thinking about going into some sort of training program. Anyway, I am going to, uh, anyway, I am thrilled to be heading back to Amsterdam, and I am thrilled to be part of the Jack Hair Cup and the Squash Off. So I will be broadcasting, as you know, live from inside the judge's house, and I will be showing you some live feeds from the award ceremonies and also from the squash off. And we have some breaking news inside. Uh, and we have some awesome stories and some awesome, and we have some amazing buds to show you during this whole week. So we'll see you guys next week with a brand new Wake and Bake with Captain Hooter. Bye. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> it's Captain Hooter, far out, man. <laughs>